Good morning. I'm starting a little bit early today. <laughs> I'm Pastor Bonnie Grimaldi. Welcome to Grace Lutheran Church. And this is Pentecost Sunday. And I'm going to give you a few announcements uh, that are in your bulletin and some that aren't. This is Pentecost Sunday when we celebrate the birth of our church by the descending of the Holy Spirit on the disciples following Jesus' ascension. We welcome William Kendrick as our guest organist. <laughs> Everybody, okay. Yes, we, his reputation precedes him. He's um, organist, choir master emeritus at St. Paul's Episcopal Church in Canton. He retired in 2017. He's also retired from the Perry Local Schools in 1998, where he taught vocal music for 31 years. William and his wife, Linda, have been snowbirds since his church retirement, and they recently purchased a condo in Jacksonville, Florida. In addition to traveling, he enjoys subbing in liturgical churches such as ours and is an avid gardener and he says he's been doing some gardening this weekend. So, very good. I, I'm doing announcements from here because I want to talk about our continuous communion today. So, let me give you a few instructions so that I don't have to do it during the service today. When it's time for communion, please let the usher know if you're unable to come forward and would like to have communion in your seat and um, I will come forward along with Jan to serve communion. Or you can also have a communion packet, so like we have been in the past. And as the ushers release your row, please make two rows, um, depending on which side you're coming from. And you've probably done this before if you've been a part of this church. Just come forward in two rows on the side that you're on and you're welcome to drop your communion cards and your tithes and offerings in the worship plate and in the offering plate. And then come on forward and I will take tongs and drop a wafer into your cupped hand. So it won't be, uh, I won't contact you. Um, there are gluten-free wafers available for those that want that. And then you step back and Jan will be back here with a cup of wine or grape juice and uh, you pick it up yourself and you can drink it and then drop it in the wastebasket on either side as you go back to your seat, going the, the way that you staying on the side that you were on. Okay. Uh, next Sunday is our congregational meeting just after the 8 a.m. service and at 1010 just before the 1030 service. So pick up your proposed, our proposed roster of leaders for the next two years and also the proposed constitution and bylaws so that you can look at them and vote on them next week. And uh, let's see, um, Rich Elliott held his first um, session of adult, of a small catechism for adults today. And so um, that started today. You're welcome to join at any time. And it's, uh, it, it was wonderful. I sat in on part of it. So that's in Luther Hall at 9.30 or 9.15. I got there at 9.30 and it was already started. So probably 9.15. Okay. Um, so please help distribute the registration forms for the Vacation Bible School, and they're out on, in the narthex. Please take them home, give them to your neighbors. You might, they have small children or children that they don't know anything about our church. Please give them a registration form. And the uh, Women's Bible Study begins June 15th at 7 p.m. in the Outreach Center, and they're studying joy in your journey, having a merry heart in a Martha world. If you're interested, please see Linda McFadden. And our sister church in New Philadelphia, Emmanuel Lutheran, is having a summer carnival 
June 18th from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. with games, activities, prizes, and food trucks. Please go and support our sister church. We continue to pray for all those affected by the Ukraine war, and we pray that we'll come to a peaceful conclusion. We also pray for the bipartisan committee for gun reform. And now we go to the prelude.
Please stand as you are able at, for the thanksgiving for baptism. Alleluia, Christ is risen. In the waters of baptism, we have passed over from death to life with Jesus Christ, and we are a new creation. For this saving mystery and for this water, let us bless God who was, who is, and who is to come. We thank you, God, for your river of life flowing freely from your throne through the earth, through the city, through every living thing. You rescued Noah and his family from the flood. You opened wide the sea for the Israelites. Now in these waters you flood us with mercy, and our sin is drowned forever. You open the gate of righteousness, and we pass safely through. In Jesus Christ, you calm and trouble the waters. You nourish us and enclose us in safety. You call us forth and send us out. In lush and barren places, you are with us. You have become our salvation. Now breathe upon this water and awaken your church once more. Claim us again as your beloved and holy people. Quench our thirst, cleanse our hearts, wipe away every tear. To you, our beginning and our end, our shepherd and lamb, be honor, glory, praise, and thanksgiving now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the unity of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. God, our creator, the resurrection of your Son offers life to all peoples of the earth. By your Holy Spirit, kindle in us the fire of your love, 
empowering our lives for service and our tongues for praise. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for our lessons. Good morning. The first reading is from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 21 for this Pentecost. When the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and tongue rested on each and a tongue rested on each of them all of them were filled with the holy spirit and began to speak in other languages as the spirit gave them ability now there were devout jews from every nation under heaven living in jerusalem at at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each amazed and astonished they asked are not all those who are speaking Galileans? And how is it we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judah and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya, beginning to Cyrene and visitors from Rome both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs in our own languages. We hear them speaking about God's deed and power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying one to another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the 11, raised his voice and addressed them, men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, those are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood, fire, and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood. Before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day, then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. 
the word of the Lord. We shall read responsibly Psalm 104 found in your book, in your insert. How manifold are your works, O Lord. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. There go the ships to and fro, and loveth the end which made you for the sport of it. You give it to them, they gather it. You open your hand, and they are filled with good things. You send forth your, your spirit, and they are created, and, you, and so you renew the face of the earth. You look at the earth and it trembles. You touch the mountains and they smoke. May these words of mine please God. I will rejoice in the Lord. The second reading for today is found in Romans chapter 8, starting with verse 14. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not re receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that every spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. The word of the Lord. The Gospel according to the 14th chapter of John on this Feast of Pentecost. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides in you, and he will be in you. Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I've said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. You may be seated for our children's sermon. Do we have any young worshipers with us today? Okay, I think this is it. Good morning, children. I can't hear you. 
Oh my goodness, let me take these off. Oh, good morning, children. Oh, that's so much better. Thank you. That reminds me of what happened in Pentecost. There were thousands of people who loved God from many different countries, and they came together in Jerusalem to celebrate. And all of a sudden, they could hear the other people in their own native languages. And how did that happen? Do you know? Do you know how that happened, that they could hear? Yes, God. It was the Holy Spirit, right? God, the Holy Spirit, was there, sent by God the Father, as, as Jesus promised, God the Son promised. And they could hear, and the church was born. And then the church started right at that moment. And now today, that same Holy Spirit is in us today. And the Holy Spirit allows us to hear God's language of love. Wow. So because of the Holy Spirit, we can hear God's language of love in ourselves and in each other. And what does God's language of love sound like? What would it sound like? I can give you a few hints. It would sound like helping other people. It would sound like, go ahead, loving people. Yeah. Can you think of other things that God's language would sound like, language of love? Going to church. What about sharing what you have with others? Wonderful. Well, let us pray. Dear God, thank you for sending the Holy Spirit so we can hear your language of love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, thank you. If you want to go to Children's Church, we can. Okay, thank you. Please pray with me. Dear God, may we all hear your language of love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We all have times in our lives when we first hear a new language. It's new, but it has a familiar ring to it. It's known through our deepest longings and desires. It fills us with life, hope, and peace. It's buried deep within each of us. It's always been there, but one day we hear it in a new way as if for the first time we hear it in our native language on that day. It describes, reveals, and makes present the work of God's power in our lives. That is the gift and the miracle of Pentecost. It happens when we fall in love and discover that our lover's voice communicates more than simply information. It also communicates presence, unity, and oneness. It's a day when the entire creation speaks. The birds no longer chirp, but sing a familiar song. The wind now whispers stories of our future rather than just blowing through the trees. It occurs when we discover our vocation and realize that we're living the life to which God has called us. And we're reassured by a voice saying, this is your place. Where did that come from? We ask at moments of joy and creativity. How did I do that? It 
It is the soft voice in the midst of loss and sorrow that says, I am here. It won't be easy, but you'll be okay. And we somehow find the strength to arise and meet the next day. It's the voice of compassion that enables us to care for others. It's a word of encouragement that guides us, a word of truth that compels us to turn around, and a word of peace that we embody as a reconciled relationship. These and a thousand others like them are Pentecostal moments, moments when we realize God is not only with us or around us, but also within us. And we are somehow different. We're more real, more alive, and more whole. However, this is not the Pentecost story that we are most familiar with. Instead, we listen for a similar sound to the rush of a powerful wind to descend from heaven and fill our entire house. We expect divided tongues as a fire to appear and rest on us. We are awaiting the opportunity to speak in another language. The day of Pentecost is described by Luke as one of sound, tongues, and languages. They are the images we most commonly associate with Pentecost, yet they're not the story of Pentecost. The two images in story are sometimes confused. It's easy to do because the images are so vivid. They're so powerful and they're so different from ordinary life. With their power though comes danger. The danger is that we look at these images but don't see through them rather than the images being symbolic, transparent, and open. We make them literal, opaque, and closed, rather than allowing the images to point and invite. We allow them to define and identify. When this occurs, the images lose their purpose and power. They can take us nowhere, and Pentecost becomes a single historical event. They're limited, they're unique, and seemingly unavailable to us. The keepers of Pentecost are not sound tongues and languages. They serve as pointers to Pentecost. When we see through these images, we discover that Pentecost occurs in all times, in all places, and in all circumstances. We hear in our native language we realize that Pentecost isn't a sound like that of a rushing wind. It's not divided tongues of fire. It's not speaking in other languages. Sound tongues and languages have no significance in and of themselves. Their meaning is found only in hearing. On the day of Pentecost, it was hearing that amazed and astonished. The sound of wind, flaming tongues, and foreign languages did not amaze and astonish them. They were amazed and astonished, asking, how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? That means Pentecost is more than sound tongues and languages. Those are just Pentecostal images. I'm not implying that the Pentecost images aren't real. Rather, they're more real than we realize. They are the gateway to our own Pentecost story. They empower us to open ourselves up to an unseen world, to cross old boundaries, to be a different way, and to live a new life. They make us capable of God. That is ultimately what Pentecost is about, 
becoming capable of God. That isn't our doing. It's the work of the Holy Spirit. Each of us is made capable of God by the Holy Spirit. It is unique and personal to each of us. Tizé is a small village in Burgundy in the southeast of France, and it's a little more than a hamlet. And yet every week of the year for over 50 years now, women and men, mainly but not exclusively aged between 18 and 30, have made pilgrimages to Tizé. During the winter months, the numbers are in the hundreds. During the summer, this increases to thousands sometimes as many as 6,000 in one week. Tizé is unique. It's a religious phenomenon of the age that we live in. At its heart, Tizé is a religious community, a community that prays three times a day, morning, midday, and evening. The prayer, as they call it, is distinctive. The great church is dimly lit. It has no chairs. Everyone sits on the floor or a step if they're lucky. Down the center, marked off by a low box hedge about a foot high, is a long rectangular space for the brothers. And they come from the front, wearing their flowing white habits. They arrive gradually and informally, perhaps over 10 minutes, kneeling to take their places. There's no talking. Pilgrims who talk are politely asked to stop. The church gets fuller and fuller as gentle classical music plays. There's no one at the front to lead. This is symbolic and very important. All are facing the same way. All are praying together. This makes manifest the Christian message of treating others as equals. All are equal. All are seeking, waiting, expectant. The bells that ring wild are stilled. A number comes up on one of the small digital screens, and people turn to their songbooks, and the prayer begins. It's quite impossible to describe the sound and effect of up to 6,000 voices. Songs are sung in only one language at a time, but during the week, the songs will be sung in a number of different languages. It's a real Pentecost experience. It's also a bit like the waves of sea breaking on the shore. Somehow, it doesn't matter if you cannot pronounce the words of a song being sung in Polish or Latvian. You get caught up in whichever language is being sung. You feel carried by the prayers of others. Your own fragile faith is strengthened by those around you. And then the singing ceases, and a silence begins. Men and women, most of them aged under 30, and children too, from all over the world, silent. This is massively unifying. Everyone praying, thinking their own thoughts, together in a shared activity and purpose. The silence gets longer as the week progresses. There's quite a lot of coughing too, but somehow that doesn't matter. There's a story about a young man who had come to Tizé for the first time. He hadn't been told that halfway through the prayer, there would be 10 minutes of silence. At first, he thought there must be a delay in putting up the number on the next, of the next song. Then he realized that the silence was deliberate, but he was still confused. He happened to be sitting close to one of the brothers, who he nudged asking, what are we waiting for? The brother whispered, the kingdom of God. This could sound trite, but it isn't. The holiness of that place makes this phrase somehow believable. There's a sense in which the music awakens 
and the silence deepens the knowledge that God is really present and actively so. He is inviting everyone to respond to his call of love, which he offers to every individual out of love. For us today, today is a vivid example of the power of God's Holy Spirit at work that can happen anywhere, even here. If you want to know how you are made capable of God, go to the places where you can hear in your own native language. There, you'll hear the stories of God's presence filling your life. There'll be stories of love, hope, and joy Stories of gentleness, patience, courage, and peace. Stories of forgiveness, mercy, and reconciliation. Stories of wisdom, wonder, and creativity. Stories of life, healing, and resurrection. Only in our native language, which is the language of God, can these stories be heard. Each one describes the work of God's power in our lives. They're the lived stories of our Pentecost, of our being made capable of God. Amen.
Please stand as you are able as we profess our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray to the God of resurrection for the church, people in need, and of all creation. Holy living one, holy moving one, First open our locked doors and by your spirit drive us out into the world proclaiming your mighty deeds. Direct our words and actions, trusting the advocate abiding in and among us. Lord, in your mercy. Feed and care for creatures that remain hidden to us yet con contribute to the vibrancy of your creation. Train us to interact with creation from a place of wonder and awe and in reverence. Lord, in your mercy. Send your spirit to places where language is a barrier to justice and mercy for those who seek it. Bless the work of translators, interpreters, and teachers. Promote understanding for the sake of those longing for true freedom and peace. Lord, in your mercy. Comfort all who live in constant fear and any who are suffering, especially the people in the Ukraine. Remind them that your spirit made them your children and they are never far from your glory. Lord, in your mercy. Guide all bishops, pastors, missionaries, and other ministers of the gospel, as you did for Boniface, whom we commemorate today. Foster our relationships with part partner synods and local ministry partners, that our visions and actions are spirit-led. Lord, in your mercy. Gather your people across religious na regions, nations, and lands. Root our common life in the death and resurrection of Christ. And by your spirit, bind us together with all the saints who have gone before us. Lord, in your mercy. In your mercy, O God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please share a sign of Christ's peace with one another, especially if you don't know them. Peace. You may be seated.
Thank you so much. Please stand as you are able. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all nations. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's presence from Passover, from death to life, as we proclaim the mystery of faith. O oh God, of resurrection and new life, Pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast. Grace our table with your presence. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as a body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us. Send us forth, burning with justice, peace, and love. With your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God, blessed and holy Trinity, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. The gifts of God for the people of God. Body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you.
body of Christ given for you. The 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 body of Christ given for you. Let us pray. We give you thanks, generous God, for in this bread and cup we have tasted the new heaven and earth, where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection that through our lives all may know life in Jesus' name. May our offerings reach out to bring hope and grace to our near and distant neighbors, whom you know and love. Amen. God, the author of life, Christ, the living cornerstone, and the life-giving spirit of adoption, bless you now and forever. Amen.
Alleluia, Christ is risen. Go in peace, tell what God has done.